Why doesn't JetEdge put a valve on the bottom of the hydraulic reservoir for easier draining? JetEdge does not want the customer simply draining and refilling the reservoir without cleaning it and replacing the suction strainer. JetEdge recommends changing the oil in the intensifier pump every 1,000 hours with ISO 46 grade hydraulic fluid. The breather cap and return filter should be replaced every 250 hours. The health of the oil needs to be monitored constantly. The level slash temperature gauge on the reservoir is for verifying the level and approximate temperature. Note that there is not enough fluid that cycles through the sight glass to give a proper indication of the health of the oil or correct temperature. The cover of the reservoir needs to be removed and the fluid pumped out. If the oil is milky in color, this means there is water contamination and the rod seal or heat exchanger has failed. If the hydraulic system has seen excessive heat, the oil will be burnt brown in color and will no longer have the correct viscosity to lubricate the internal parts of the pump. Corrosion from condensation can form on the lid and make stalactites that drip rust into the tank. All corrosion should be ground off the lid and from all exposed metal that is not normally submerged in oil. A light coat of grease needs to be applied to the ground cover to prevent corrosion. Newer reservoirs are powder coated for corrosion resistance. These should not need to be ground clean. Make sure to thoroughly clean the reservoir with a solvent and absorbent pads. No paper towels are to be used in the reservoir. They can catch and tear, leaving debris. No pipe sealant or thread tape is to be used on the fittings inside the reservoir. The suction strainer needs to be cleaned or replaced. Pump fresh filtered fluid into the reservoir until the hydraulic fluid shows at the midpoint of the hydraulic sight gauge. Do not fill completely to the top. The fluid requires room for expansion as it warms during operation. The gauge on the filter housing is not to be used as a 250 hour service indicator. The gauge shows red when the filter is clogged and bypassing. Ensure the hydraulic pressure is at zero before starting this procedure. Place a drip pan under the hydraulic filter. Use a wrench to loosen. Some models have a spin-on filter, like an automotive filter, and others have a filter element in a canister. The black canister has a nut on the bottom to help with disassembly. Remove and discard the filter element. Remove the old O-ring from the lip of the filter housing. The new white screw-on filter will have a new O-ring inside the packaging. Determine which is correct and install the new O-ring. Install a new filter element, thread the canister on, and hand tighten only.
Make sure the case drain is full of fluid before turning on the motor to bump the pump. The case drain is typically on the upper side of the hydraulic pump and a hose connects the hydraulic pump to the hydraulic reservoir. Loosen the hose to the case drain on the hydraulic pump. If fluid begins to leak, tighten the connection. The case is full. If fluid does not leak, remove the connection and add hydraulic fluid to fill the hydraulic pump case. Clean hydraulic fluid is vital to the longevity of your jet edge pump.